Now another block problem with a little bit of friction. Let's see, so the, this surface will be frictionless again. So we still have our blocks on our frictionless surface. And let's see, we've still got M1 here, and it's pushing on M2 here. And then we have a new block. M3 is along for a ride up there. There's M3. And this, just to be clear, this is frictionless here. But this, there's friction here, right there. Otherwise, it wouldn't stay on there. It would slide off and be a mess. And it has a coefficient, static coefficient of friction mu s right there. And again, we're going to push Fp. And one little substitution, we're going to end up adding these masses up a lot. So let's say big M equals M1 plus M2 plus M3. You often start with getting the total acceleration. And let's go ahead and do that. Uh, to start a problem like this, you probably want to know A. Right? This thing, if we're pushing it on a frictionless surface, it's going to accelerate at A. So that's kind of like what we did before. You treat it as one object to get the acceleration. And in this case, F equals MA. We'll just do one dimension, F equals MA. So A is um, the force over the total mass. So that would be um, Fp over m1 plus m2 plus m3, which we're calling big M. All right, so there, right off the bat, is the total acceleration. You can do that for any configuration of blocks. This is going to be the force you apply divided by Fp. Um, let's see if we can figure out what is the, is the frictional force um, force that uh, 2 is applying to 3. So we call that F2-3. Force to 2 on 3. This is a frictional, frictional force, not fictional. Um, let's see. Well, the quick answer to that is, if you look at it, it's actually no different than it being here. Right. Here it's being pushed by friction. Here it could just be being pushed by a normal force or by a contact force. So to get it, really you just say um, to move at A, it must be that the force of 2 on 3 equals the mass, which is M3, times the acceleration, which we already have here, Fp over big M over big M since there's only one force on three. Okay, to be clear, some of these blocks we'd have to think about multiple forces. But since this is always the one in the end, the only thing pushing it is the little frictional force dragging it forward. Okay. Um, another thing, so, so that was pretty straightforward, just like all the others, it gets its fractional mass, right? This would be the same as M3 over M1 plus M2 plus M3 Fp. In any kind of situation like this, the force it takes, the total force on each one has to be the fractional, uh, its fractional mass for the total force. Um, but here we can go a little further since we know a little bit about, uh, we know a little bit about friction now, is we could say how big can Fp be be before uh, block 3 slips. Remember, the nature of static friction is with whatever you push with, it pushes back, action reaction. But eventually, um, you break the static friction and things start to slide. And then you're doing kinetic friction. Okay? But static friction means if we give you a value of mu s, you can push up to the normal force times mu s, is what we learned about, about static friction. So we would say that um, F23 must stay below um, mu static times the normal force. Because there is a normal force. Even though we're really working in one dimension now, there's gravity, M3 pushes down, M2 pushes up with a force, M3 times G. So it must be that mu S times N, that's equal to the static friction times M3 times G, because those two together 
make the normal force on three. We could call that in three, the normal force on three is not mg, m3. There we go. All right. So with that, you could say then that uh, the force of two on three, remember it was like this, the force two, three, what was it? It was m3 over the total m times fp. We're saying that must be less than or equal to, it must only be up to mu static m3g. That has to be the case. Okay. So if you wanted to solve that then for fp, you could say this has to stay below. And you see what's interesting is the m3s cancel. It doesn't actually matter how massive m3 is. It's a little bit unexpected. You have to say that the force, the push force, doesn't depend on m3, but there is a limit. You can only push so hard before it'll slip, and it's mu s uh, g times big M. The static coefficient, coefficient um, times bi, uh, big M times g. That's the hardest you can push without this block sliding backwards. And you might be a little surprised it doesn't have M3 in it, but that actually often happens in these kinds of problems. The force you're limited to, F equals MA, the force is mu s times the normal force, but if everything is level, the normal force has M3 in it, because it's M3 times G, which cancels the MA part. Okay? So it's often not there. It's really a maximum acceleration. See, If you take this F push and divide it by M, what have you got? You've got that you can't accelerate any faster than mu s, which is always less than one, times G. Because it's G is the acceleration that's pushing it down. So you can't accelerate harder than mu s times that, or you'll break the friction and slip. So G is only showing up because it describes how hard the things are smushed together, which affects the friction. It has nothing to do with motion in this direction. It has to do with the normal force and the, the gravitational force pushing against each other in the vertical direction.